Dear Madame Rector, Beste Caroline, Dear Artistic Director, Beste Michael, Dear Guests, You're here today at the European Astronaut Center and it's a pleasure for me to talk to you on this great event bringing science and culture together. Behind me is a capsule of the Orion spacecraft that will venture astronauts again forward to the moon. Exploration has always been at the heart of human history. It has always been at the heart of culture. We have always looked up to the stars, made paintings, uh, fantasized about what could be there out. And it's great part of human endeavor to look for the unknown. Today, of course, we don't explore the stars. Today we fly to the International Space Station, but also from the International Space Station, we can see the immense beauty of our planet. Some of the pictures that you see that are taken by our astronauts could be just artistic paintings as well. And also we see the vulnerability, the fragility of our planet that is also linked so much to what we see in art, the fragility of the artist, the fragility of the art itself that we can sometimes see. It's of course not only art, it's also other aspects of culture. Uh, if you live for a long time in a closed space environment with, with a very number, uh, limited number of people from different areas of the world, uh, Russians, Americans, Japanese, uh, you also have other aspects of our culture that join. During my space flight, for example, we had a great Halloween event on board of the International Space Station. So we do not only work, we also enjoy, we also celebrate on board of the ISS. Again, a testimony that science, culture and technology can go together. So I wish you all a great event uh, today. Uh, we have had visionary scientists uh, and visionary uh, artists in the past. Think about Jules Verne uh, with his uh, tales of uh, traveling to the moon. Uh, think about Kuifje that has his uh, rocket uh, standing on the moon. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we will again venture out and go to the moon. And more than ever, we need scientists and engineers and cultural people, artists, working together to provide a positive message to society. Today, we see a lot of horrible things around us, be it in geopolitics, be it in uh, the pandemic that is touching our societies. We need a positive message, and this positive message can be given by you, scientists and artists together. I wish you an excellent event today. Uh, so I think this is a picture that you all knew, the International Space Station, and uh, Tim was actually the uh, main designer of uh, our Expedition 20 patch. Again, one of the main features that you see in the patch are the st six stars, six stars that uh, represent six-person crew. Uh, this is the Expedition uh, 21 patch, which uh, the main designer and the main inputs from this patch came from my uh, wife, Lena, who uh, did a wonderful job for the crew in supporting us in designing this patch. Uh, this is a rocket with Soyuz Tamiya 15, our uh, vehicle, space vehicle, and it's ready to go. And as uh, part of 2021, we mentioned we had a number of uh, different arrivals on board, uh, different preparation on uh, the U.S. and the Russian side, but it, it, it's all about the same. Everybody's getting ready, saying goodbye to their families, and getting on board their spacecraft. We have uh, two different experiences getting to space, uh, Nicole and I on a shuttle and uh, the rest of the folks going up on a Soyuz. In either case, eight and a half minutes later, you're in space and you get very busy preparing your vehicle to dock with the International Space Station.
Rendezvous is a tightly choreographed ballet between the Soyuz, the shuttle, and the International Space Station. The Soyuz and shuttle perform a series of engine burns, so we arrive in the vicinity of the station with a certain velocity to a certain attitude and position. It's an indescribable feeling when that hatch is opened up and we move inside the station and greet our uh, new crewmates. Uh, it's so nice to see them. High fives, uh, hugs, big smiles, everyone's delighted to, to see each other. Moving into this big space station volume from after the tiny confines of a Soyuz vehicle is also a bit surreal as well. It's a, it's a big living space, lots of cables, lots of hoses, a little bit uh, overwhelming the first couple of days, but we quickly get oriented to our new home. And uh, this is Russian VA on the docking compartment the preparation for MRM docking. Hatch removing, things like that. There were 11 spacewalks during the, the three shuttles that came to the space station during expeditions 20 and 21. This is me inside the payload bay uh, preparing the external facility for its removal of the robotic arm. And uh, it was quite an experience. I'm sure Nicole can say the same thing, that uh, there's not something more eye-opening than going out into space. And a lot of work that goes into uh, being ready for the space or the spacewalk is the time you spend inside getting uh, prepared the night before, getting all the suits ready. And then we always have a person on board that's choreographing for us. Uh, I had the, the real privilege of getting a ride on the end of the arm here for uh, uh, quite a long ride from the station over to the payload bay. Um, very exciting. Uh, and for me it was neat because it actually felt like everything was moving up towards me and I was just standing still on the end of that arm holding the box. We had several visitors. The crew of STS-127, also known as 2JA, uh, delivered two platforms to the Japanese laboratory. Uh, the first platform was a permanent one that we called the Japanese Exposed Facility. And then the second one, uh, Julia and I are pulling payloads off of this uh, logistics platform and installing payloads onto the external facility using the Japanese robotic arm. HTV. This was uh, uh, Frank and Bob and I uh, trained a long time on the ground to work HTV and we very fortunately were able to uh, work it together on board. Uh, we had a beautiful sight of HT coming in um, towards the station Then, of course it was very, very stable as it waited for us to move the arm towards it to grab it. Uh, we were very pleased about how stable it was and it was, um, it, it was just a beautiful thing for us. Uh, and then Bob went on to do a wonderful job berthing uh, yeah, a couple days after uh, the capture, uh, Nicole and I unberthed the exposed pellet, EP, and handed it off to Frank and the Japanese arm for attachment to the Japanese laboratory. It delivered two more experiments to the back porch. And uh, the, J, um, the Japanese HTV vehicle also delivered four or five tons of internal cargo to the station, so we transferred that to our living quarters. One of the highlights, of course, uh, during uh, these missions for the crew on orbit is uh, the EVA and the robotic ops. Uh, here you see the MPLM being uh, docked uh, due to, uh, to the International Space Station. And of course, uh, here you see me working with uh, Christoph Fugelsang. Uh, very nice for me to be able to work with my European colleague on board of the International Space Station and uh, uh, transferring all this uh, cargo ops uh, together with him. Uh, cargo ops is uh, quite fun to do, uh, especially moving these uh, large facilities. Uh, you have no clue on the ground how you would do this, but in orbit, as you can see, things get a little bit easier. Uh, this is uh, progress approaching, I guess. And Max is ready to uh, take manual mode in different cases. But it's, uh, it's okay, and uh, I'm ready also to support uh, progress approaching and docking, docking with the ground. And this is view from the progress. And this is um, MRM, Russian research module, just uh, docked. And opening the hatch of that, and we see gifts and supplies. The most important function of the International Space Station is to serve as a world-class facility for doing uh, science. Uh, we had a number of 
uh, in a variety of scientific experiments. Uh, here Nicole is uh, preparing and inspecting the mouse drawer system. Uh, experiment using uh, six uh, mice to help us un better understand the bone demineralization problem and osteoporosis, which afflicts many people on Earth. A Canadian experiment from York University examined uh, changes in uh, perception, body orientation in space. A wonderful uh, material science uh, facility called MSG, or Multi Material Science Glove Box, located in the Columbus module, was used for cl uh, combustion research. Uh, Mike performed an American experiment using it, and uh, Frank, a uh, European one. Another European experiment uh, was called 3D Space. Uh, here Tim is donning a, a, a hood with, and some 3D uh, specs and doing some um, perception work here as well, just evaluating uh, the zero-G effect of, uh, uh, on uh, 3D perception in space. And this is not a 3D perception, but it's actually a technology demonstrator that uh, also was from the European Space Agency, where we tried to see if uh, augmented reality could help us uh, in performing uh, procedures. And of course, here you see Nicole uh, drawing uh, her own blood, uh, something that most of us didn't like to do, but Nicole was very proficient in it. Uh, Bob was actually my preferred uh, blood drawer on, on orbit, and he, he really was my hero there. So Mike and I are, are uh, conducting an experiment using two internal satellites called SPHERES. And uh, some really smart guys in uh, college, guys and gals, developed algorithms so they can fly autonomously together. This was one of our, uh, kind of the internal part of one of the, the racks that we have on board, uh, part of the fluid integration rack, or I'm sorry, the combustion in rack. And it's, uh, at that point, we were changing out some of the fuel cells inside of the, of the rack itself. We had a number of plant biology experiments on board, Russian, Japanese, and uh, Canadian. It's really interesting to do fundamental science in plant biology, try to better understand why plants grow up or roots grow down, and why they don't that in, do that in space. Uh, we also think about plants as being part of a life support system on future uh, moon or Mars, Mars bases as well, being a, a good way to provide oxygen to the crew and also to uh, uh, treat wastewater as well. Melfi, just ice cream storage. <laughs> As you can gather from uh, the conversation here, uh, we had quite a lot of fun on orbit and uh, Roman was always there to provide a good uh, crew morale for which uh, we absolutely have to thank him for six months he was able to do that. Uh, but we also had to run a little bit and you see here uh, we are demonstrating that uh, we are almost ready to accept T2, although the, on the ground we are not yet. Uh, but exercising, of course, is a very important part of our work. One of the uh, exercise machines we use is called ARED. It stands for an Advanced Resistive Exercise Device. And it replicates a lot of the barbell type of work you can do in a conventional gym or the cable type of work as well. This is our stationary bike called Sevis, and it really gives a tremendous workout. And here you see Nicole on our treadmill, uh, Tevis, and uh, she's getting a good workout as well. Here's Max Sarev, and... Uh, you can see he's had a good long workout. I think he's going to float around for a little bit, maybe take his feet off the ground and <laughs> recover. You know, uh, there's all kinds of exercises that we did to improvise on board, but uh, the push-up wasn't a very successful one for a good workout. And after Tim left us, we all got really pumped up, as you can see. Um, but what we can say about those exercise devices is that I think every single one of us here came back in better shape uh, post-flight than uh, when we went up. It was, uh, I think, really a testament to the kind of equipment we have on board now. We set up kind of a cool little um, way to do tours where we could look both forward and aft, and uh, a number of us did that. It was really, really fun to take uh, a tour through the station and see look in both ways. Uh, yes, and as, as you can see, as we are floating through the station and uh, as we meet all our crew members, uh, I think you can see that uh, almost all of us uh, have smiles on their faces and this was basically how it was for about uh, six months uh, uh, in a row. We were very happy to be there, we did a lot of good work, uh, we accomplished a lot but we also had a lot of uh, good fun on orbit and uh, I think that was what made us, uh, our crew so effective uh, through, throughout our stay. Here we're flying through the, uh, to the Russian segment, uh, Nicole taking over from me. And we come through the PMA, and uh, one of our favorite things I think uh, a lot of us did was uh, rolling through the FGB. It was a nice place to do that, a nice long place to do that. 
And that brings you over into the uh, service module, and Max is doing the uh, backwards float um, from the FGB back into the service module. It's amazing what you can do up there. You know, you just can't imagine how cool it is to uh, look out the window and take pictures of our planet. Here's New Zealand, and uh, every day looking out the window is a real treat. I think all of us would rush to the window to take pictures of our favorite sites. Uh, there were a number of windows to look out uh, and take pictures. One of the ones that we used was uh, uh, a port-facing window in the Japanese uh, laboratory module. And again, from any, every angle, you got to see just really beautiful and amazing sights of our planet, some that looked like, more like artwork than what you would expect to see on um, the surface of the Earth. This, for example, is the, the Grand Canyon, and this is uh, Paris, uh, with this very, some very distinct uh, features that uh, we, we see here. Uh, towns were really nice features to, to photograph, and as you can see in the next picture that will come up here, uh, also some of the particular man-made uh, islands. I think it's one further because uh, this is Houston, of course. Uh, but later, one of the man-made islands are, of course, uh, very nice features to take. Is Grand Cayman Island you're looking at here. Oh, unfortunately, we see some uh, uh, um, forest fires and other calamities on Earth as well. Forest fires in oil fields. This is uh, the city of Dubai, uh, near the Straits of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf. A uh, very large man-made um, article that's very easy to see. And the beautiful island of uh, Venice with its canals easily prominent. A monthly uh, hair cutting. <laughs> uh, very expensive. <laughs> and very scary. Sounds the wrong with my <laughs> ear. A little chop off the ends, does everyone good? Even if you only have a couple hairs, you can. <laughs> and, and you find out what your crew members are really like. <laughs> uh, food for us was uh, very important uh, on orbit. Uh, we must say that uh, now with all the international partners providing their uh, food as well, uh, there is such a big variety uh, of food. Some of us mastered to eat it. <laughs> I didn't, uh, obviously, so I obviously need to go again. If some ESA uh, staff is present, I would like to fly again to space station to master that kind of part of, of the job. <laughs> I think that uh, speaks for itself. <laughs> You know, uh, one thing I learned about living in space was that you quickly adapt. And uh, I've always wanted to be like Spider-Man. I had my five minutes to try that inside this empty MPLM. This was the uh, official handover when we went from uh, Expedition 20 to uh, Expedition uh, 21. Uh, of course, it was a joyful time on one hand uh, for Gennady uh, and his crewmates to get back to Earth, Mike as well. But on the other hand, it was uh, also difficult uh, to uh, say goodbye to them. And uh, they became really, really good friends up there. And uh, uh, as you can see here, you're taking uh, part of another crew member that uh, we are going to shove around in the shuttle transfer item number 914 <laughs> in the last shuttle mission. So we, there's mixed feelings uh, when uh, departure occurs. Um, we feel fulfilled that we've accomplished all the objectives of the, the expedition or, or the mission. Um, but we also know that we're going to soon be home and uh, seeing our, our families. Um, it's a mountaintop experience. This is our, one of our last views of the space station as we uh, depart. World-class laboratory, almost completely assembled, home for six people and represents the, the future of our endeavors uh, in space. We are present on the International Space Station and you are of course part of this big team that help us do that, that help us explore the solar system and the universe.